Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number six in our new Arduino tutorial series on how to build a non-axis inertial measurement system. What we're going to look at today is we're going to look at the homework assignment that we gave you in lesson five and that homework assignment was to take your most excellent system which was the Adafruit BNO055 uh, non-axis sensor and to use the acceleration data to calculate a simple approximation for tilt. Okay, so where we're going to start is we're going to start where we left off in lesson number five. In lesson number five we had the software working to the point that we were pulling the acceleration data the X acceleration, Y acceleration, and Z acceleration data off of the sensor. We were plotting it using the software serial plotter. We showed you how to install that and then we showed you how to get the system calibrated. So at this point we know how to calibrate it. We know how to look at a nice graphical visual of the data coming off of it and what your assignment was was to approximate the tilt above the x-axis and above the y-axis using the three acceleration channels. So were you guys successful? Were you able to do that? Leave me a comment down below. Did you kind of even try or did you just fold up like a cheap lawn chair? Were you successful in bringing home the money on this or did you simply crash and burn. Okay, so two choices. You brought home the bacon or you crashed and burned. Okay, so let's get back to our project and again where we are picking up is we're picking up where we left off in lesson number five. If you go to www.toptechboy.com if you find our series of uh, non-axis IMU lessons. If you let's look at lesson number five, the code is there for kind of like where we left off. Okay, so where we left off, you can find that on toptechboy.com. But where we are going to go now is we are going to go uh, back to our code, which we ended up with in that last lesson. Okay, and uh, this is the code from lesson number five. You can bring it in and then you can download it. I'm going to have to turn off my serial monitor, my serial plotter here in order to download it. So remember you can only have one thing on that serial port at a time. <clears throat> okay, and then we will come back to the Arduino. All right, and then this was the code that we ended up with in lesson number five. I'm going to go ahead and download that. Once it is downloaded, we are going to go back to <clears throat> our serial plotter. We're going to turn that on. Okay, so we go back and I'm on COM5, so I select COM5 and I say open. <clears throat> and with a little luck, we should see this thing come back to life. It's always a little bit scary. Okay. Let me come over here. I think uh, I'm going to click open again. Let me make sure. Okay, there it goes. So it's coming to life. Now what we want to do is we want to come over down here. You can see that we're getting data off of it. We want to come back over here and remember how we had this thing set up in lesson number four and five. I'm going to turn off the uh, data, the X accelerometer, Y accelerometer, and Z accelerometer, and I'm just going to be looking at the uh, calibration. So I've got the accelerometer calibration, the gyro calibration, the magnetometer calibration, and the system calibration turned on. If this doesn't make sense, go back and watch lesson four and five. But what we got to do before we move on, we need to get this thing calibrated. And so if you see just sitting here, like we explained, the gyro just calibrates itself just by sitting still. Now we want to bring the magnetometer up and we can do that. Boom! Did you see that? Boom! Just wave it around a little bit and the magnetometer will calibrate. So now we have the gyro 
calibrated and the magnetometer calibrated, now we need to try to calibrate the uh, accelerometers. And that, remember, I have found the most effective way to do that is to kind of show it 45 degree angle. And you want to kind of count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Am I the only one that counts in Mississippis? Is that just a southern thing? Leave a comment. Does anybody else count in Mississippi's? Okay, so we showed it that 45 degrees. Now let's show it this 45 degrees. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Now let's show it this 45 degrees. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Now we're going to go upside down. Hey, you know in Africa they don't count by Mississippi's. They count by Tanzania's. And so we're going to turn it upside down. One Tanzania, two Tanzania, and boom. You see it looks like that uh, accelerometer calibrated. So now if I just let it sit still here, what you can see is I've got accelerometer accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope calibrated at three. And then I've got the system because of that. The system is up at three. And so now everything is calibrated. Because of that, I'm going to turn the calibration data off. OK, I'm going to turn the calibration data off. And what I am going to do is I am going to turn on those accelerometers. So I'm going to turn on the, uh, yeah, the z-axis accelerometer the y-axis accelerometer and the x-axis accelerometer. So let's just see if this makes sense, sort of like where we left off in the earlier uh, lessons. We're kind of calling this the x direction. So if I move in the x, you can see that the red, which is x acceleration, is moving. I'm going to move it in the y and the blue, or the purple, which is y. And now I'm going to accelerate in the Z and we get green. And so everything seems to make sense now, right? So the acceleration seems to make sense. And I do believe I've lost my focus. OK, there. I try to be mindful of keeping this thing in focus for you guys. That looks pretty good. OK, so you see, we can measure acceleration. So you can imagine, what are some things you could do? Well, you could have a drop sensor, right? You get a pretty strong signal if you drop it. And so you could have a, a, a drop sensor. And in fact, you know, one of the things you could do is, is do you have, see how Z is got 1G? Well, what happens if I drop it? While I am in free fall, the acceleration is going to go to zero. So if you look up there, you can see it wasn't falling long enough to go to zero, but a drop in that, you know, in that Z acceleration in this orientation is an indication that the thing is in free fall and being dropped. And so what's one thing you could do? Well, if it's a laptop, if you had this inside the laptop built in, you could sense that zero acceleration. You could park your hard drive so that the laptop doesn't hit the ground with the hard drive spinning and damage things. You see, one thing that you could do is you could uh, measure free fall. You could see if an object has been dropped, and then you could take some action based on that. What's another thing that you could do? Well, these are used in cars. Like, what does rapid deceleration in a car mean? means you've had a crash. What do you want to do? You want to fire the airbag. Well, you can see that you don't want to fire the airbag if you just hit a curb. But if you actually really hit something, you will want to fire the airbag. So uh, I think I don't quite have that. Yeah. OK, so what would be good to fire the airbag would be a rapid deceleration in x. OK, so you can imagine that there is a unique signature associated with a car wreck that would not be associated with hitting a curb. And so part of the trick is to take these signals, but it's actually devices just like this that are used to fire the airbag in, the, uh, in, in, in a car. And so there's all types of applications for these accelerometers. But what your assignment was, your assignment was to create an approximation for tilt. And we kind of have two axes of tilt that like imagine this is your Jeep or your vehicle. You could, uh, and you know, this is the front, okay, and you're in here in the driver's seat and you would kind of want to know how steep of a hill are you driving up or how steep of a hill that you are driving down, okay? And so you see the X accelerometer is changing as I tilt it even though it is not moving, 
the acceleration vector changes because that acceleration vector of gravity is now hitting the sensor at a different angle. And so you can see that this is kind of a neat tilt meter that the X accelerometer is changing as I am lifting my little Jeep or my vehicle up above the X axis. Remember, X axis is this way, Y axis is this way according to our nomenclature. And then if I do the right hand rule, X to Y, thumb points up, Z would be up. Okay, so if you look at this, I can kind of see by looking at that red that it is tilting in the X direction. Okay, <coughs> and then if I tilt it this way, so like imagine you're in your Jeep and you're kind of going over a rock and you're rolling, I can see that in the Y acceleration because again it is affecting the angle the gravitational vector is always coming straight down but how that gravitational vector intersects with those accelerometers changes based on the tilt okay so what you were supposed to do is you were supposed to go away and you were supposed to come up with an approximation for tilt we'll kind of call this pitch so we're going to call this pitch and then we're going to call this roll okay and you were supposed to kind of approximate that based on the data that you had so were you successful in bringing home the money or did you crash and burn did you fold up like a cheap lawn chair okay well let's go through this and I'll kind of show you a way to think about it but what you got to understand is this is just an approximation and you cannot go and put this on your unmanned aerial drone or you can't try to autopilot your Cessna or you can't put this on a jet fighter this is just a simple little thing like if you have a little toy robot that's driving around and you want it to do certain things based on what's happening this is for fun this is for entertainment this is for little toys this is not for unmanned aerial drones this is not for jet fighters okay so how do we look at this all right well let's go back and think we've got two things that we want we want to know how far we're lifting the nose you know we're kind of thinking about the angle between the nose all right and the horizon and then the left door in the horizon and the right door in the horizon this is X and this is Y okay so how do we think about that well first of all I think what you got to think is the ground is always the ground so we're gonna draw the ground like this and what you also have to think is you have to think that this is the acceleration vector of gravity it always comes straight down and it's always perpendicular to the ground now all types of things can happen with your device but the ground is always the ground and the gravitational vector is always coming down like that so let's think of our device now okay so our device I'm gonna draw with a dotted line okay because it can move <clears throat> and so what I am going to think is I'm going to think of this right now sitting on the x-axis so so this is the ground and the device you're looking at the side view and we're gonna call this kind of the x direction so that is like this direction now what I'm going to do is I am going to tilt this up like that so that is the diagram what does that correspond to nose is coming up the nose is coming up above the x-axis okay nose is coming up about the x-axis and so what are we going to call that okay we need to call that something and what we are going to call that is <coughs> we're going to call that the angle theta okay we're gonna call that the angle theta so now I have that now what you have to see is this gravitational vector is no longer hitting this orthogonally because my device moved so what I have to do is I've got to kind of draw a triangle and break this vector into a vector that is hitting the the the, the face normally or perpendicularly to that z-axis accelerometer and so we're gonna draw it like this 
okay? And then what are we going to call this? This is the acceleration in the z direction because this is the vector that is hitting that or that uh, that accelerometer perfectly orthogonal. And then this is the vector that is hitting the x accelerometer. Okay, so I've broken this one g, I've broken this one g gravitational vector into a component that is hitting perpendicularly the z accelerometer and is hitting perpendicularly the x accelerometer. So I've broken one g into a z component and into an x component. All right, now we got to do a little trigonometry. Now you know that this angle and this angle add to 90, right? Because this is a right angle. So the theta in this corner of the triangle add to 90. You also know that this is a 90 degree angle because I deliberately brought that vector in to be normal or perpendicular to my tilted sensor. Well, if this angle and this angle add to 90, and this is 90, then this angle and this angle add to 90. So this plus this is 90, and this plus this is 90. What does that mean? That means this angle is the same as this angle. All right. Now, what we have to do is we have to figure out what that angle is because that is our tilt angle, okay? And it is here that you have to do some trigonometry. And I gave you a clue, which was the word Sokotoa. And my pen just ran out of ink, and I am looking for a new pen in the midst of all this mess. So we're going to have to change colors here. Okay. So I told you that the key word was so ka toa okay and this is saying that the sine is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse the sine of an angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse the cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse and toa the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay, so here is my angle. So what are some things that I know? Well, I know that sine of my angle is equal to the opposite, which is acceleration in the x. So what's the opposite of that? It's the vector, the acceleration of x over the hypotenuse, which is 1. Okay, that's one equation I could use. Or the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, what is the adjacent? That would be AZ. That would be AZ over the hypotenuse, which is 1. Okay, or what I could say is, I could say that the tangent of theta the tangent of that angle is the opposite over the adjacent, which is equal to the opposite is AX over AZ. All right. Since I know the gravitational vector is 1, well, right now it's 9.8, but I could take all my numbers and divide by 9.8 and take it from, you know, sort of like 1g is equal to 9.8. I could just scale everything by 9.8, and then the gravitational vector would be 1, and that's probably a little bit, uh, a little bit easier to do, and we'll do that when we get into the code, okay? So we'll remember to divide all of our numbers by 9.8 so that we're dealing not in meters per second squared, but we're dealing in g's. You know, 1g is that vector, one gravitational vector. <coughs> so I could use this equation, right? I, I, where do I get ax? Well, I measure it, right? That's coming off the accelerometer. We already know how to do that, okay? Where would I get az? It's coming off the accelerometer, right? I am measuring ax, I'm measuring az, and uh, I'm 
measuring both AX and AZ. I'm not even using AY yet, right? I'm not even using AY. I'm using AX and AZ. Now, it, it, it just turns out that this one works the best because it kind of gives you the more stable answer as you're approaching some of the different angles, but you could use any of them. So how do I solve for, uh, for theta? Well, I know that tangent of theta is equal to my measured acceleration in the x direction divided by the measured acceleration in the z direction. I take the tan inverse of both of these, so I'm going to say theta is equal to tan inverse of ax over az. And these come from the accelerometer. This is an approximation for tilt, okay? It really, you shouldn't use it more than 45 degrees. It's kind of a good approximation from 0 and 45 degrees. So let's go in and let's see if we can actually bring this thing to life. And so I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to give you a code view. I'm going to try to give you a nice code view. Uh, let's see what we have going here. Okay, that's pretty good. And where we're coming up, what we're coming up with here is we're coming up with the code that we left off with. And I'm going to, let me show you one thing before I do that. I need to turn this off or we're not going to be able to download it. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to COM1 and that should free up that serial port for uh for other business when we try to download. So now I'm going to come back to the code view. All right, uh, yeah, I'm going to come back to the code view here and let's uh, start doing some coding. All right, so we're going to come up here. One thing is, is that we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do this, uh, where, where did we put it? This tan in inverse function. And so what we need to do is load the math library. I don't think you can do that without the math library. And so I'm going to come in here. Let's see if I can make this fit a little better. Okay, so I'm going to get the math library. We're starting with the code that we left off with in lesson number five. So I'm going to say include <coughs> math dot h and that should allow us to do the uh, inverse tangent function now i come down here i turn the sensor on you know i go through the calibration we'll you know we, we'll probably when we reload this we'll probably need to stop and do the calibration again and then uh so this is the code to do the calibration and then this is the code that goes out and gets that accelerometer vector okay and then i print out acceleration x acceleration in the y direction acceleration in the z direction and then i print out all of that uh all of that uh, calibration data this isn't making sense. Go back and watch the earlier lesson. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to calculate the tilt, theta. Okay, and I've got what I need to do in order to do that. Okay, I've got what I need in order to do that. So what do I need? I need a variable. So I'm going to come up with a variable up here, and I'm going to define a variable, and it's going to be a float and it's going to be theta. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to calculate theta. Theta is equal to the inverse tangent. Well, in the library that is the function a tan 2 and then it's, you know, ax over az. Well, what you, you put like numerator comma denominator. So what is the numerator? It's the acceleration in the x direction. What is that? We just made the measurement. We just made the measurement up here. And so that is ACC, ACC dot ACC dot X comma, which is the divided by. All right. And then what did we want to divide by? It was ACC Z. Okay. ACC Z. So I'm going to put ACC A cc dot z like that 
and then close my parentheses. So this should be an approximation for the tilt and the tilt above what we call the x-axis. Okay. Now whether I have oriented this sensor in the right direction, like I'm calling this the forward x, they might call this the forward x. If, if I'm not oriented with them in the real world, I'll just uh, flip the sign, but we'll, uh, but we'll wait and see. So then I'm going to come down here, and after I print system, I want to get this over to the plotter so I can look at it. I'm going to do serial.print ln, uh, no print. First of all, I need to take that ln off, and then I'm going to say print. i got to put my delimiter, which is a comma, okay, and now I'm going to do serial.print serial dot print print ln and then what do I want to print? I want to print theta and then I go like this. All right, a couple of bookkeeping things. Uh, let's divide everything by 9.8 just so that everything is normalized to a vector of 1. So I'm going to say divided by 9.8 <coughs> and then divided by 9.8 and so everything here is going to be now in units of G instead of units of meters per second squared. So let's try this. I should have done this before. Okay, so I, everything's now going to be normalized towards 1G. Okay. Then what I also need to do on theta, this is going to report in radians. <coughs> and it's easier if you're just printing things to think in terms of degrees. And so how do we convert from radians to degrees? Well, first of all, you got to think what fraction of a circle do you have? A full circle is 2 pi. And so what fraction of a circle do you have? Well, it's whatever number you have divided by 2, divided by 3.14159265.4. Okay. Uh, so now I have a fraction of a circle. Well, how many degrees is it? Well, how many degrees in a circle? 360. So now I multiply that by 360. Okay. Now I should have theta should be now in, uh, theta should be now in uh, degrees. And so now I'm going to print theta. Okay, so now this one is very important. I need you to hold your breath as we download this code, okay? Oh, download, 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 yes, yes. Yes! Boom! Did you see that? Every one of you must have held your breath. Okay. Oh man, I just poured iced coffee everywhere. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to go in and we are going to look at our serial plotter again. And so I'm going to call that up and go back to a nice view that has the serial plotter in it. And let's see if this is all going to show you. Yeah, we kind of can see the code there. And <clears throat> man, I need to adjust my windows just a little bit here so that uh, these things kind of change on me sometimes. So let me adjust this so that you clearly can see and we don't cut anything off. I really wish that. You know, I just kind of lose orientation on these things as I'm going around. I have them set up perfectly, and then they kind of lose their orientation. All right, so that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I think that I don't want that title to interfere with your views, so I'll take the title off. By this time, you should know that we're on lesson number, uh, lesson number six. Okay, so now let's go back and let's see if we can bring this thing back to life. Remember, I had to turn it off. I had to turn it off so that I could download to the Arduino. So now I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to go to COM5 and I'm going to say open. And now this is where we are really, really hoping that it comes to life. Really, really hoping that it comes to life. And it's not coming to life. How long should we wait before we try it again? One, 
Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, 4 Mississippi. Okay, I'm going to hit open again and hope that it opens. Boom! We'll have a little celebration. Yes, life is wonderful. It's like running through a field with a beautiful girl. Yes, life is wonderful. We have to take time to celebrate these little successes. Our serial monitor, our serial plotter is indeed alive. Okay, so now back to business. We got to come over here. And what we need to look at now is we need to look at uh, that we have another data channel. So down here, I need to come over to data format. And instead of plotting seven things, I'm plotting eight things. So I add one more. And then when I come to plot, I've got to come down here and I've got to name it theta. Okay, so now I've got to decide what I'm going to plot. Well, I probably need to go in and calibrate again. And so I'm going to turn everything off but my calibration, acceleration, uh, calibration, gyro calibration, magnetometer calibration. And now I'm going to turn theta off because I've got to get this calibrated. So already the gyro is calibrated. I go like this, a little crazy, a little crazy motion, and now the magnetometer is uh, calibrated. Now I'm going to show it 45, 1 Tanzania, 2 Tanzania, 3 Tanzania. Turn it up this way, 1 Tanzania, 2 Tanzania, 3 Tanzania. Turn it this way, 1 Tanzania, 2 Tanzania, 3 Tanzania. Now I'm going to show it the upside down, 1 Tanzania, 2 Tanzania, 3 Tanzania. And now I'm just going to let it sit and see if that was enough to calibrate it. Not quite that time, not quite. So we're going to go back upside down at 45, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to show it the other 45, 1, 2, 3. Now I'll show it the 45 like this, one, two, three. And now one Tanzania, boom, boom. Okay, we are now calibrated. All right, so now we're gonna turn the calibration data off. And now let's turn on the tilt angle. Okay, and we've got it, looks like auto scaling. So what we would expect is we would expect, let's just try to stay under 45 degrees. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing the nose up. And what it's showing is it's showing a negative. Okay, it's showing a negative to where that should be positive. And so basically what it, that means is, is that it's calling this the positive x direction. And I did the math for this being the positive x direction. So I just need to go back to Arduino. And so I am going to turn this off. Okay. And then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change, uh, change my view so you can see it. Okay. Change my view so you can see it. And I'm going to come in here and I am going to take the x value and I am going to uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just make the whole thing negative right here. And you can play around with it. You just got to kind of get your axis system oriented correctly with what the accelerometer is calling things. And rather than me turning the accelerometer around, I'm just going to change the sign there. And also it's easier since the cord's back here if I tilt it this way. So let's see if this will work. I'm not even going to hold my breath this time. I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Okay, good. Now we're going to come back to the serial monitor and we are going to try to bring it back to life by coming back up here and going to COM5. Okay, it looks like it came back to work. Also, I'm going to turn the auto scale off because it's giving me way too big of a scale. So I'm going to go from like minus 90 <clears throat> to 90 on the scale. Okay, and it looks like it did that. And so now let's look at this and see what happens. I'm going to back off a little bit so you can see it a little clearer. So I'm going to tilt the nose up to 45 degrees. Boom! Do you see that? Let me see if I can show you a little better view. Okay, watch this. Nose up to 45 degrees and look at that. Uh-huh. Boom! Did you see that? I'm approximating tilt. 
I am approximating tilt. It's like life is wonderful. Did you see that? We're approximating tilt. Celebrate. Now let's let's go back and see if we can do the nose down one. Okay. Let's see if we can do the nose down one. So now we're going to take nose down at 45 degrees. Man, that looks really good. Okay. Now the trigonometry is going to break down if you start going much about above 45 degrees. So let's take the nose down and what's going to happen here. Okay. It's still kind of looking reasonable and that's saying like maybe 80 degrees. But I want you to watch what happens as I get vertical. Okay. You see, well, we can't really see what happens there. Let's see if I can see it on the upside. I guess I need to change my scale to more like minus 100 to 100. So let's try that. Uh, minus 100 to 100. Now, even if it looks like it's working on here, I still have to warn you, you shouldn't do this. The math is good to about 45 degrees, plus or minus 45 degrees. The math is pretty good. So we're like that. We're like that. Now we're going to go all the way nose down. Okay. And that's kind of behaving pretty well. But believe me, there are axes where this breaks. So it's saying I've gone beyond 90 and like I've kind of turned it all the way around. And so let's come back here. Okay. That's kind of, that's kind of neat. That is kind of neat. Let me check my code here real quick. Okay, so that was kind of neat. Now what I want you to think about is we have a most excellent toy suitable for demonstration purposes only. Do not put this on a flying blender. But this is approximating tilt. Well, like if you had this on your Jeep, what you might also want is this direction. Now you notice when I tilt in this direction, it's properly not reading any change in this tilt. Well, how would we go about doing that? Well, you just redo the math only instead of thinking about the X compared to the Z, you think about Y compared to the Z. And so in that case, what you could say is if you wanted to call it like roll, that's going to be tan inverse of a Y over a Z. Are you able to see that? Okay. This tilt along this kind of roll axis is going to be a Y over a Z. And I believe what we would like to see is if the left side goes up, that should be a positive tilt, and the left side going down should be a negative tilt. All right, so let's see if we can go back to Arduino and program that. Okay, so we're going to go back to COM1 to turn this off. Now we are going to see if I can get back to my code view. Man, I am really going to try to work hard about having these things better set up, but as I go from window to window, some things get a little bit off, but we'll get better as we go along, and I will need, I will need my keyboard. All right. I must have focus. Must have focus. What is it you aggravating thing won't focus? Okay, there we go. Brilliant, brilliant focus. All right, so now we need to get our, our code view up here where I can see it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, why don't we call it uh, fee, okay? So we're going to need to declare a variable fee if we're going to use it. And so we will say float fee. And then we're going to come down here and we are going to say fee is equal to minus, I don't know if it's minus, this might be oriented right, arctan2 
of what this time a c c a c c dot y divided by nine point eight comma a c c dot z right right we're thinking tilting this way this time which is how far we're lifting above y instead of like this same math just different sensor divided by 9.8 like that now we need to print phi as well so we're going to come down here and what do we need to do we need to take off the print ln <coughs> we need to print a comma serial dot print put our delimiter in and then we are going to do a serial dot print ln print ln and this time I'll put in my fee like that and so now let's download this code I'm very confident I don't think I've made a mistake I really don't I think this is gonna work I'm gonna remain calm living dangerously not even holding my breath At the end of the day I am running out of coffee all right it downloaded so let's go back to our serial plotter view and then we gotta hope that this thing comes back to life so I am going to hopefully bring it back to life by coming up here and going to com5 and then I'm gonna say ah I see it was already trying to open when I clicked open the first time that actually turned it off okay so now I also need to come down here and I need to go back to data format how many are we plotting now nine channels so I need to bring that up to nine right here I hope you guys can see this but I'm talking you through it so that's nine now I come back to plot and then I come down and this one is now fee okay I'm plotting fee so now what two things am I interested in I you know since we turned this off and turned it back on I really think we need to recalibrate so I'm gonna take because every time you download the code it sort of like resets the sensor so I think just to be careful we should probably recalibrate it so I've got the calibration turned on I'll auto scale <clears throat> the gyro is already calibrated just sitting there move it around up came the magnetometer now we're going to show it one Tanzania two Tanzania three Tanzania one Tanzania two Tanzania three Tanzania one Tanzania two Tanzania three Tanzania uh, let's see now upside down 45 one Tanzania two Tanzania three Tanzania let's give it this one, one Tanzania, two Tanzania, three Tanzania. Let's see if that made it happy. One, boom. Okay, we are fully calibrated. All right, we are fully calibrated. Now we're going to turn the calibration data off over here. And we're going to turn on theta and phi. Okay, now I'm going to scoot back a little bit so you can see more clearly what I'm doing and I'm going to tip the nose up which means that we should see theta look at that huh look at that I don't like that auto scale I'm going to turn the auto scale off okay look at that look at that okay now let's go nose down now I said the left which is here up should be positive and we're not getting anything it's not working it's not working Houston we have a problem did you see the mistake somebody tell me what mistake was made tell me what mistake was made does anybody know we've got to debug this we have to figure it out what is going on somebody tell me the mistake I made somebody tell me the mistake I made okay I know what the mistake was but I was just gonna see if you guys would see it let me go back to a code view okay here's a good code view
let's look when we calculated phi. What did we do? We just took the arc tangent. Okay, we did not convert it, so it's reporting in radians, and radians are really small, and so on that degree scale, you're not going to see it. What did we need to do? We needed to divide by 2, divided by 3.1415926540, okay, and then we need to multiply by 360, okay. Now we have to remember to turn our serial plotter off. Okay, turn the serial plotter off and then come back to our code view. And now let's try to download. It's going to work. It's going to work. How many of you guys caught me not converting? Why do I make those mistakes? Because you know, being a teacher, it's the ones I see over and over and over. And so I kind of like to drop in the mistakes that I see that are really, really common. Okay, I believe that downloaded. Let's come back over here to our serial plotter view. And then we will need to turn this back on. Okay. and I need to go back to the serial plotter view. All right, and boom! How did that thing come on by itself? That's peculiar. I must have uh, rolled it in without realizing it. Okay, so now is the moment of truth. I'm gonna lift the nose and I should see theta green come up. Boom! I should see theta go down. Boom! Now, the moment of truth, I'm going to roll. Oh, yeah! Did you see that? Did you see that? And look, I go the other way, and it goes the other way. Oh, my goodness! It's working! It is working! We are able to measure tilt in two different directions. We are able to measure tilt in two different directions. Okay, so that was pretty neat, but one of the things, we'll just sit and enjoy it for a moment. You have to enjoy the moments when things are actually working, because a lot of times they're not going to be working, right? But what I think you did notice is, hopefully you noticed, that we did have one tiny little glitch, and let's talk about that. What I said was, I said that I wanted to get out of your way a little more. I think I'll even come over here. Okay. Now, what I said I wanted was I wanted this, the left up, to be positive and the left down to be negative. And you can kind of see since, since the sensor is wanting to make this positive, the whole thing is kind of reversed for us. So we need to fix that real quick. And I think I can do that without switching views if I just bring up my code. Okay. So where was that? It was over here where we calculated. Uh, the fee, and we're just going to put a negative here so that we don't have to take the circuit apart and get it oriented properly with the axis. We're just going to kind of switch it right there, and then I need to turn. I need to turn this off. Okay, now I need to come over here, and I need to download. It is looking happy, looking happy, looking happy. Okay, it's looking happy, it's looking happy, it's looking happy. All right, so now let's come back over here. Let's turn it back on. All right. So now I'm going to lift the nose, the nose lifts. I'm going to drop the nose, the nose drops. I'm going to lift the left, and it shows a positive, and I'm going to lift the right, and it shows a negative. Okay, now. Let's see if this looks reasonable. Like I can lift it a little bit, and that looks about right. That looks about like 20 degrees. Okay. And then I can also roll it. Okay. Do you see while I'm sitting here, 
holding that in position, I can roll and I can roll and I'm not really affecting my pitch. So you see, I got a little, a little bit of cross-axis isolation. Now, I'll say that that works best. That works best when you're under 45 degrees. As you start getting higher angles, it's not going to work so well. But there, left, right, left, tilting right. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, up like this, up like this. Now, I'm just going to look and I am going to roll it all the way vertical. Okay. And do you see what happened? That all of a sudden when I rolled it vertically, it's like the pitch broke. And if I roll it all the way down, like the pitch goes crazy. And to try to show you a little bit, and this is why I say you have to uh, stay below 45 degrees. When you are playing around, I think I need to go to this other camera. When you are playing around with trig functions, particularly when you start doing inverse trig functions, you have to be so super careful because let's think of the tangent function. Okay, the tangent function between 90 degrees in minus 90 degrees, the tangent function asymptotes to that and then comes up here and asymptotes to that. And so let's say at 89 degrees, I'm going to be way up here. But then when I go to 91 degrees, where am I going to be? It comes back here and repeats. And so when I just change from 89 degrees to 91 degrees, that tangent function, that arc tangent function is very poorly behaved and you get like this huge change in things. And because of this singularity or because of this vertical asymptote, you can get really, really crazy results when you start doing tangents and inverse tangents as you start approaching those places where there are asymptotes. Also, like if you use the sine inverse and you're, let's say, dividing by the sine of a number and then where the sine of zero is zero and you're dividing by zero, that can create problems as well. So you got to make sure that you're just playing with this with toys, right? Toys only. And uh, you also have to make sure that you are uh, that you are only uh, you are only focusing doing this at less than 45 degrees. You don't want to go in and do uh, something a lot uh, a lot more than that. So let's come back over here and just look at this again. So I go like this. I go like this, I go like this, I go like this. It's all looking pretty good up till about 45 degrees. You know, everything seems to be pretty happy. So if you're just playing with little robot toy projects, this is uh, this is pretty neat. I can't emphasize enough how careful you have to be though if you are going to try to put this on like a moving vehicle or a motorcycle or uh, a drone or something like that you really have to go in and be much much more sophisticated but I just want to show you kind of like you can get the data off the accelerometer you can approximate tilt now let's think about something so all of a sudden we're not thinking about this as an accelerometer we're thinking about it as an inclinometer or a something that measures tilt but now I want to show you something you see how I'm holding this perfectly flat I'm not going to tilt it this way and I'm not going to tilt it that way all right but now look what happens am I tilting no but what's happening I'm measuring tilt when I am not tilting. Okay, I am measuring tilt when I am not tilting. The storm clouds come. All right, now what would happen? What would happen if I use this simple algorithm in this simple demonstration in something like an airplane? What would happen if I use this in an airplane? The airplane would crash and burn the airplane would crash and burn. So that's why you've got to really understand the limitations of what you're doing and you don't want to do something 
outside the range that it was designed to work. And so we've had fun with this project, but you can see where we are now is, is that uh, if I get an acceleration with no tilt, I misinterpret that as a tilt. So what your homework assignment is for next week, do we want to just fold up like a cheap lawn chair and just quit? No, we want to figure out how to address this issue. Okay, we want to figure out how to address this issue, and this will be the thing that we do next week. Your homework assignment is to think through it, do some research on the internet, figure out how do I compensate for vibration, you know, causing me to read vibration as tilt. Okay, how do we correct for that? So that will be your homework for next week. Uh, I hope my graphics don't annoy you, but I got I, I figured out how to get higher resolution. Okay, I figured out how to get higher resolution in my videos. What had happened was that my camera and the things I was doing had capability of much, much higher resolution, but when I would put them into my production software, my Wirecast, it would just kind of freeze it up. What I found out was, was that it was using the CPU to do all the graphics work, and it would just choke the CPU down. And then I found out there was a setting in there. If you check that setting, it would use the graphics card to do the graphics project. And now you are getting to watch this in much higher resolution with the fancy background graphics. Okay, you guys, if you like this, think about giving me a thumbs up. Think about leaving comments down below. Were you successful? Did you get this homework done or did you fold up like a cheap lawn chair? Did you figure it out or did you crash and burn? Okay, I want you guys to get to where you're not just copying me, but you're figuring things out on your own. Because why? Because that is what people will pay you for. No one is going to pay you for copying me. They will pay you for figuring out things on your own. Now, I go in and I show you so you can see how I think and you can sort of not just get totally stuck somewhere. But what I want you to see is you need to not just be copying me. You need to see how I think and you need to get to where you are actually doing things on your own. Okay, Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. Think about liking, subscribing, sharing this with other people. I will talk to you guys later.